Integrative Inquiry, Week 13 Practice, Visioning and Prioritizing the Dream Goals. So the invitation is to bring a gentle attention to the body in the chair. And then when you have located the body in the chair, just bringing a gentle attention to the breath sensation in the body, whatever that might mean to you. you might be noticing the rise and fall of the belly or the chest. Noticing the moisture, the dryness, the coolness, the warmth of the air being breathed. Noticing the length of the breath, the depth or the shallowness. Just getting playfully curious about what you're noticing as you explore the breath sensation in the body. Perhaps noticing the mind will wander as the mind is inclined to do to other bodily sensations, sound sensations, thought sensations. And seeing if you can just notice what you're noticing with one word without going into the story of the word or what's being noticed. Just noticing with a gentleness and a kindness. Before kindly redirecting attention to rest gently on the breast sensation in the body. And then let's allow a few wishes to arise. You meant to be here. You arrived here. And I am grateful. I'm taking one more moment to bring a gentle attention to rest on the sound sensation. And now inviting your attention back to the screen front of you. Welcome. So in this webinar, we're exploring our vision or our dream, our goals for, for the future. So in mindful compassion practices, we often talk about present moment awareness. And one of my mentors has mentioned several times that our present moment awareness, bringing our attention to noticing what we're noticing in the present moment without judgment and with kindness, that doing that uh, repeatedly will create awareness of choice and then aware choices, which will create our future. 
There's also this notion of intention setting. And so we've talked about where intention is placed, attention will follow. So as we begin this practice of visioning and prioritizing our choices to create, uh, optimize our, our future goals, the invitation here is to bring this mindful compassion practice to moment to moment noticing as we think about what we really want to be, do, or create four years from now. In the webinar, we mentioned you can use whatever time frame you'd like. So please, uh, my invitation will be four years from now, but if you'd like to use three years from now, two years from now, one year from now, five years from now, whatever you'd like to use that's meaningful to you, please do so. And in this moment soon, what I'll be inviting you to do is pull out your journals, your pen and paper, and this will be a practice that's just for your eyes only, or you're welcome to use the chat window, whatever you'd like to do. But I'll be inviting you to think about what it is that you want to be, do, or create four years from now or five years from now, your time frame. And as you envision this, whatever you'd like to be, do, or create, I invite you to notice that as you write, um, notice if it's, this is something that you would love. You would love, not somebody else would love for you, but what would you love? What brings you alive? This is the awareness of the emotional awareness and the bodily awareness, what brings you alive? What is a vision that we would, would require you to grow? It would require to you, you to grow. And what is a vision that aligns with your core values, that brings good to yourself and to others, and requires you to trust in that life force that's breathing you, that, that life force that invites us to notice the breath sensation in the body, that trusting that that is always there, regardless of whether we're thinking about it or not. So this will be the invitation. And the invitation is also to think holistically. So in the webinar, I talked about having a vision only for vocation and not having a vision for my life that involved family or friends or my health, spirituality, and overall being, or what I'd really like from time and money freedom. So the invitation here is as you think about these three questions in this journaling exercise, uh, as, you, as you think about these questions, more than three questions, um, think about a holistic voc vocation. Also, what I'd like to invite you to do is imagine yourself in that place. So in the webinar, we ask you to consider these questions, consider the vision. We asked you to consider the holistic vision for your future. And now we're inviting you to embody this happiness and gratitude as you write. And so whichever time frame you've selected, I'll just use four years from now. When I think about four years from now, I'm going to imagine myself living the life I would love living. And so I'll write, I'm so happy and grateful now that. And I'll write with as much detail as possible. Now that I am, et cetera, and I can feel this and I can see this. And so we're utilizing all of these sensations and we're really um, moving this uh, into this place as, it, as if it has happened, as if it has happened, okay? So is there uh, anyone by show of hands who still needs something to journal about? I'm so happy and grateful now that, anybody? everybody has something and we'll we'll test our vision in a moment so just think about it as holistic so think about i'm so happy and grateful now that i'm doing this kind of work with these kind of family and friends my health and spirituality is this my time and money freedom is this right and i'll set the timer for just two minutes so again my invitation to you is to begin writing i am so happy and grateful now that and write whatever comes to mind for two minutes until you hear the sound of the bell. I'm so happy and grateful now that. Please begin.
and taking a few moments to complete what you're writing. And the invitation is to wrap up what you've written. And take a moment to read over what you've written, just a moment. And as you read over what you've written, my invitation to you is just notice what you notice in the body. Notice what you're noticing in the body with regard to bodily sensations as you read over what you've written. Now the invitation is, in, is to open the chat window again if you haven't already opened it. It's the conversation bubble. You just click on that. If you can't find it, just take your cursor and swirl around until you find it and click on that. And I'm interested in your sharing, if you would like, to just noticing what you noticed as you wrote your vision for your future. I'm so happy and grateful now that so you don't have to share your vision. Just what did you notice as you engaged in that practice? I'm so happy and grateful now that. What did you notice? Some of you noticed some excitement. Anybody notice some excitement? Maybe, maybe noting where you noticed that in the body. Ari, I became more calmed in body and mind. Yeah, so, oh, thank you, Ari. So more sort of um, that just, ah, this is it, yes? Becca, I relaxed into the fun of the planning. Thank you. Yeah, so it was fun, it was relaxing, it was calming. What else did you notice? I could not write fast enough to keep up with my anticipation of what is to be. Thank you, Sean. Yes, I was experiencing that as well. I was practicing as well. So I actually went over two, two, a little bit more than two minutes. So I'm like, oh, I just, I just want to get this written. Yeah. Thank you. Did anybody notice any fear, Martha? I noticed the, that while I had no idea what to write, writing discovered things and built a sense of excitement. Ah, thank you, Martha. Yes. In an earlier class today, we were talking about how uh, sometimes in this journaling process, when the part of us that doesn't know just writes, I don't know, it gets out of the way for the part of us that does know to emerge with ideas and insights and discoveries. So thank you. Yes, yes. And so did anybody notice any fear as you were writing that? Okay, a little bit of fear. Yes, that, that may also be a part of this. We're so happy and grateful. And then we notice that, ah, but what if it doesn't happen, right? Or, ooh, I don't know how to get there. Whatever that fear might be signaling. Resisting, resistance gave way to greater trust and movement. Ah, thank you. Didn't notice fear, but a ra rather was a bit of fierceness, a very good kind. All right, thank you. Yeah, I hear beautiful awareness. Thank you. And so in this practice, I'm so happy and grateful now that uh, the invitation is um, to do this practice as many times as you'd like to. And again, starting from this place of what do you want to be, do, or create, then thinking about it holistically and setting a timer for two minutes or longer if you'd like, and just inviting in a tuning up of awareness. And, and this is just another form of intention setting so that when we bring this awareness of what I'd like to be, do, and create, and I bring this into my day, I can notice where daily choices are in alignment with this vision. 
and where I'm starting to move out of alignment with the vision. And some of that may not be mental. Some of it may be physiological, which is why we're inviting in the awareness of the physiology as we, as we engage. So now the invitation would be, let's just take a minute. And what I would love for you to engage in is to take that vision that you wrote and just take a moment of reflection and ask yourself these questions as you reflect. Just going through, we've gone uh, over these questions. So just take a moment and look at your vision and test your vision. Just test your vision against these questions. And where you notice there isn't a yes response, just make note of that to come back to that portion of your vision and revisit that through this process later. Okay. All right. Now, how many of you noticed that your vision was in alignment with all of these test questions. So you could answer an S, a yes to these. Okay. All right. So I'm seeing some hands go up. Thank you. Thank you. And how many of you noticed maybe there were some yes to some, but not yes to others, or you're not sure. Maybe yes to some, but not yes to others, or you're not sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure. So the, thank you. So the invitation would be wherever you notice there might not be a yes, or it might be mm, not sure, just an invitation to take your calendar, whether that's on the phone or I have the paper calendar over here and just write in a few, uh, maybe five minutes where you'd like to revisit your vision in accordance to this test, these test questions. And if you notice a yes to all of these, then my invitation to you would be where in your calendar can you find five more minutes? So just looking through your calendar, finding five more minutes to set the timer and engage in, uh, Again, this visioning, I'm so happy and grateful now that. So you'd be engaging in the journaling process or you might be looking at these questions again, re-engaging in the journaling process to move one of these questions to a yes, so genuine. So taking just a moment, either your paper planner, your diary or schedule or your electronic one and taking just a moment to write that in and I'm practicing right alongside you. So I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the invitation is to imagine ourselves in, in this. Does anybody recognize what this is? You can use the chat window. A DeLorean. Yes. What else is it? This is sort of a throwback to a movie. An old movie. Back to the Future. A time machine. Yes. Okay. So, so the envisioning of this process is to actually get into that time machine, move forward one year from now, three years from now, four years from now, or as we invited at the end of your career, perhaps you're seeing yourself giving your retirement speech. Perhaps you're even seeing yourself writing uh, your advanced, um, uh, I can't think of the name of it now, so feel free to help me, but the, the, the obituary, your obituary, that thing that they write about, here's what this, per this is the life that this person lived, this is the life. And again, the questions are always to move to what would you love, what brings you alive, holistic, and test those. Advanced directive. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> yeah. So it's just this, what what you can imagine 
um, is being written about you uh, in a certain period of time frame. And as you engage in this exercise repeatedly, the invitation is also to tune up this awareness ve vehicle of noticing what you're noticing. Now, why would I be inviting you to tune up the noticing what you're noticing? What do you think? Feel free to use the chat window. Why would I invite you to notice what you're noticing as you envision from a place of gratitude, this place of where you are being, doing, or creating what you, what you dream of doing, being, and creating? So I'm inviting you to notice what we're noticing, to, yeah, to make it more real, to also notice where in resonance you are noticing in the body, you, as you envision, you're noticing in the body a particular resonance, you, 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 many of you spoke to an excitement, a peace, a calm, and then as we engage in those moment-to-moment -moment choices, we can begin to notice, ah, this is the same resonance. Ah, this is, I am in the, I am in a place of being, doing, and uh, what I love, and co-creating what I love. I'm in the process of being, and doing, and co-creating what I love, or I'm moving outside of it. This choice is moving me farther. So this is an integration, building on the integration work that we've talked about of noticing what we're noticing in the moment as it aligns with our intention, our vision for the future. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the other question, how many of you, as you looked at your vision, um, had the question of, I'm not sure how to do this. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm not sure how to actually pull this off. All right. All right. Yeah. So I'm hoping that all of you are raising your hands because if you're not raising your hands, your vision may not be big enough. All right. There we go. Thank you. Yes. Your vision may not be big enough. You may be selling yourself short. Um, you may be, I don't know, only you know. So when I look at my vision, I'm like, you know, I'm really not sure how to pull this off. And this is the part of our testing our dream, that it requires us to trust this life force that's breathing us. It requires to trust a bit of the unknown. And um, what I'd love for you to do is from wherever you are, is to read this slide. Feel free, if you're in a space where you're comfortable, feel free to read it out loud. Let's take a moment. All right, what did you notice? What did you notice? Were you able to read and understand this paragraph? Anybody not able to read it? Yeah, you read it, I can understand it, despite the misspellings, yeah. So it was very easy, thank you, yes. So what this is pointing to, whoops, I'm so sorry, I thought I had shut that off, I apologize. Um, it's a great awareness device, yes, thank you, Martha, yes. So what this is pointing to is that we, may have a fairly accurate inventory of where we are now. Our resources, what we're lacking in resources, whatever those could be, time, money, um, education, whatever. But if we can really get clear on where we're going in our life, what we would really love to do, be, create, co-create, then there's a built-in intelligence in each one of us and in the collective of all of us that will will figure out the how. A trust of the how will fall into place. And as we think about this, also my invitation to you is the how 
may reside again in the moment to moment awareness, our turning up that moment of moment awareness, the stopping, breathing, noticing, reflecting, and responding to this moment. Who would I be if I thought this thought wasn't true? What would I choose? Who would I be if I thought this thought was true? What would I choose? And then moving into action, okay? Moving into action and tuning up the awareness again in the inner wisdom and the collective wisdom uh, may be the result of how from getting us from here to there. Does that sound fun? Feel free to use the chat window for, yeah. All right, yes, great. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Feel free to use the chat window for any questions or concerns you have. So as I mentioned in the webinar, these practices are taken from Mary Morrissey's Life Mastery Institute. And so first part is actually um, visioning. So engaging in the, the visioning, and then it's really making a decision. This is the dream that I want to live into. This is the vision I want to co-create. I really am deciding in this. And that's not to say that it won't change along the way as we learn more about ourselves and each other um, and more about what it is that we want to create. It could change, absolutely. But now, as we think about from where I am with what I have, what is the, what is the vision that I would, that I fall in love with? And then once we begin to hone that out in as great of detail as we can, in as holistic as we can, and testing it against our test questions, then the invitation is to decide. And I love this quote um, from Mary Morrissey, decisions are not made in the future, they're made in the now. And this really resembles, you know, what I've heard John Kabat-Zinn say a, a lot, uh, is that the, the future is created from our moment to moment choices of now, of right now. So when we notice awareness arising around, ah, not in alignment or in alignment, then that's an opportunity for a choice, yes? And a decision for a choice. So in this moment, my invitation to you is to take that pen and paper, if you would please, just give you a moment to uh, write down your decision for your dream. And this is an example. You could simply write, I'm so happy and grateful now that I've chosen daily to live from my dream, um, to live from my dream. Uh, so that's my invitation. So just take a moment and write that in whatever way is meaningful to you in your journal. Okay, anybody not written that? All right, you have that, okay. Bringing your attention back, taking a moment to notice the body in the chair, the breast sensation in the body. How many of you notice this happening when you're like, yeah, I got this. And I think Ari, you spoke to the fierceness. Yeah, this is my vision. And then what did you notice when you made a decision for your vision? Did anybody notice this? Oh no, we just decided for this vision. Ah, anybody notice any little fear? No? All right, all right. This is what comes up for me is what if I fail? Um, and sometimes it's, wow, what if I succeed, depending on the aspects of the vision? What if I succeed? What does this mean oh, for, my, for my life, for my well-being, for my friends and family? So this may come up, and if it does, then we engage in this process of befriending our fear. Now, we, in the Mindful Compassion Leadership course, we've been working uh, a lot with strategies to regulate, uh, to bring attention to fear, to kindly name it, and then to engage in the emotion regulation strategies. Another uh, way to think about this is um, befriending our fear, which is also a mindful compassion practice. Um, and what are you noticing also 
in this. So mindful compassion practice of befriending our fear can be an individual practice. But what are you also noticing in this picture? What are you noticing? Is there some support for the little one who might be walking? And we don't know, maybe the little one is supporting the mom in the, oh my gosh, my child's starting to walk. Joy, assistance from someone else. Thank you. Yes. So the invitation, definitely support. Thank you. Yes. So the invitation here is that our vision, again, when we're thinking about this inner wisdom and a collective wisdom, as we think about our vision, what we also want to invite in is a thoughtful tuning up of the awareness in our system of support. So who is with us on this journey? And they don't have to be on the same exact journey we're on, but who is with us to provide a system of support um, for this vision? Right. Uh, and as we've talked about in our resilience training and other training is in this course, uh, failure or success is an ex it's just an experience. It's not who you are. It's just an experience. It's not who you are. It's a part of moving into the direction of our dreams. Um, they're learning opportunities and they're required to succeed in living a life that we would love, yes? So what are your go-to strategies when you notice failure or maybe even as we've talked about that success could be uh, to, to also derail us? What are your go-to strategies. And so my invitation here is for you to use the chat window to share your go-to strategies whenever you're noticing failure or success. Go-to strategies. What are you noticing? Some of you are practicing self-compassion. Thank you. So noticing self-compassion when whenever you notice success or fears. Some of you are trying not to get wrapped up in the ego. So maybe you're using Brene Brown's uh, stormy first drafts, right? The narrative, just really looking at the narrative of this and, and really checking that out and saying, hmm, this is not, this is not it at all getting lost or over-identifying. You're using some cognitive regulation. You're not over-identifying with the success or failure, reminding yourself it's just an experience. Yeah, you notice knots in your stomach for both success and failure. Yeah, I hear a lot of awareness, Sean, thank you. Lots of awareness, yes. And so the invitation is how would we like to meet that? Um, so you might remi remind yourself of your strengths, some more cognitive regulation and ability to to do what I set my mind to, um, and or your strategies to pick up from the failure and move on. Yes, and one of the one of the strategies. Thank you all. One of the strategies we've been practicing is this SBNRR or uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction training. Would talk about it as stop. They're both that same process. So whenever I notice getting swept away by ego, when I get swept away by the story of, oh, I can't do this or whatever it might be, is to invite in that stopping, ah, I notice that taking the focused breath, soothing the amygdala that's been hijacked, tuning back up that analytical reasoning, the cognitive regulation part of the brain, and observing and noticing what's here. Ah, it's just failure. Ah, it's just fear. Ah, it's just knots in my stomach. Yes. And then inquiring, who would I be? What would I choose if I didn't believe this was true? Who would I be? What would I choose if I believed it was true? And then proceeding, moving into action. 
So the other part of this is to reconnect to your dream. And I think I heard this in your, Rebecca, is I'm reconnecting to the dream. I'm reconnecting to the vision. I'm reconnecting to the intention for the purpose of my life. Yes. Yes. It's reconnecting. And then we're noticing what we're noticing in that reconnecting. Is this still the vision that is true for me? What might have shifted here? Yes. So the invitation that I have for you is now to engage in this process. I'll set the timer again for two minutes. And what I'd like first, first to do is revisit what you wrote in that um, vision statement that you wrote. So this is a part of reconnecting to our dream and noticing what we're noticing, another particular strategy. And that strategy is to, with, with your vision in mind, with the I'm so grateful and happy now that I'm living my vision, maybe we notice a setback. Or maybe we notice that I don't really know how to do this. And so the invitation is to take two minutes and journal without self-editing or self-critiquing, -critique, journal on any action that you can take from where you are with what you have to move you in the direction of your dream. So just take two minutes and uh, journal any ideas. You can just spill them out, okay? So two minutes. What is one action you can take from where you are with what you have to move you in a positive direction towards your dream? Please go. Two minutes, just writing whatever comes to mind. And inviting in that avoidance of self-critiquing, just writing whatever comes to mind, even if it doesn't make any sense. Writing whatever it is, even if it doesn't make sense or isn't perfectly clear. It's continuing to write whatever comes to mind. taking just a few more minutes to complete all those ideas. Just keep them flowing, even if they don't make any sense or might sound illogical. All right, completing your writing. Let's take a moment to remind ourselves that we are still in the chair, the body's still in the chair. Let's check in to see if we are still breathing. What are you noticing? Thank you. And now the invitation is to take that list of all the ideas you wrote and just take one more minute and there'll be two actions that I'm inviting you into. So one is to read over the list very quickly, circle the ones that make the most sense. These would be the ones that resonate with you. So maybe you, again, you wrote down all sorts of things, but, and some of them might be really 
feasible, but they're just not resonating with you. You'll, you notice see that big yuck, like, I don't want to do that. That is not, mm -mm, no. So, so first you'll circle the ones that make sense, and then you'll also go very quickly through and prioritize them. I'd like to do this one first, this one next, and this one third, okay? So you're circling all the ideas that resonate with you, and then you're prioritizing them in the order in which they resonate with you, not the most logical order, just the order in which they resonate, okay? Please begin, one minute. You're circling the, the action steps that make the most sense to you, and then you'll prioritize them, one through whatever number. Noticing what you're noticing as you do so. Taking a moment. Placing your pen down. Noticing the body in the chair. Noticing the breast sensation in the body. Now, as you look at this, you have this list of all the ideas to that are one action you can take from where you are with what you have to move you in the direction of your dream. You've circled the ones that resonate the most with you, then you've prioritized them. My next invitation for you is to take that planner again, remembering that it could be your electronic planner or your paper planner. And my invitation to you is actually schedule in at least three of those action steps. So it might be this week, it might be next week, it might be next month, but to just actually schedule in that five minutes for searching for grants, for, for perhaps, the five minutes or the two minutes to reach out and make an appointment with so-and-so. 15 minutes to just write a draft concept paper. Whatever it is, just inviting you to go in there and schedule actual action items that you came up with this. So my, I'm inviting you to two minutes of scheduling your action steps. Two minutes of scheduling your action steps through your calendar, noticing what you're noticing, noticing if that, oh, I can't possibly do that, and seeing if you can apply that stop, breathe, notice, reflect, respond, practice to that thought. Okay, just taking another minute to look through your calendar and getting your items scheduled in there. I'm doing the same thing you can probably hear. <laughs>
Okay, I'm just taking a few more moments to wrap up your scheduling. Okay, taking a moment again to place the technology down or the planners down. Taking a moment to bring attention to the body in the chair, the breath sensation in the body. Invitation now is what did you notice? What did you notice as you went through the practice of coming up with ideas, circling, circling the ones that resonated with you, prioritizing them, and then scheduling them into your planner. What did you notice? What did you notice? Or what questions, comments, insights, ideas do you have? <clears throat> Please use the chat window to share those. What did you notice as you practiced? Did some of you notice uh, the self-critiquing mind as you wrote down action steps? Did anybody notice that? Okay. <clears throat> Did anybody notice coming up with more ideas than they thought they even could imagine on that sheet of paper? Yeah, all right, excellent, thank you. Ah, ah, I hear, thank you so much. Some of, some of you are noticing annoy, annoying with annoyance with self for not actually doing those. So my invitation would be to bring in that stop, breathe, notice, reflect, respond, bring in the self-compassion practices. Just is, yeah, just is. And now a new opportunity, new moment, new opportunity for a new choice. Thank you. And uh, so noticed, uh, interesting how priorities worked out. Okay, so just notice the interesting, how you, how you prioritize the steps. You notice that the steps in realizing my vision are much simpler once they are on paper. Ah, thank you, Sean, I hear a lot of awareness. Yes, yes, wonderful. And Martha noticed mine stacked from easiest to hardest, low hanging fruit first. Okay, yes, great, so go for it, right? And who knows, once we take this step, yes, how many times do we tell our students and colleagues, take this first step, then notice what happens next. Take this next step. Some, sometimes it might be failure, sometimes it might be success. Sometimes things fall in line, sometimes they don't. Sometimes we shift direction, right? We're just noticing what we're noticing and we're noticing the storytelling mind and, uh, and avoiding going into the storytelling mind. What if it just was? What if it just was? Ah, this, now this, yeah. Thank you. Anything else that you're noticing? Okay. So the invitation here is that anytime you're noticing stuck, the feeling of stuck with anything, it could be a challenge at work, it could be a challenge with family and friends, it could be a challenge with not, excuse me, not feeling like you're moving in the direction of your dream. I invite you into this practice. If you have a trusted friend, colleague, family member with whom you can share your vision, then that person um, can become a partner in giving you ideas. Now, um, sometimes it's easier to do this with strangers and so you might say, I have this um, vision I'd like to share with you and I'd love for you to give me ideas of what I could do to make it happen. And I've, I've done this with strangers, of course, in this workshop setting with the Live Mastery Institute. Um, and, it, and my job was to just listen and write down whatever, I, it's two minutes to share the vision. I'm so happy and grateful now that they don't know where I'm coming, you know, they don't know from where I'm starting. They don't know my resources or anything. They're just tossing out ideas that come to them. And then, then I circled the ones that made sense. And so there was a lot of stuff on there that, no, I'm not, 
no, this isn't resonating with me. But there was stuff on there that I was like, wow, that's a great idea. I would have never thought of that, right? Or didn't think of that. And so you can do this practice in, in collaboration with, with each other. If you have a buddy in these practices, you can engage in this with the, with the buddy. And um, that may also move you off of center. But very, very important in this uh, practice is it's one, one thing to come up with the ideas. It's another thing, as you may have noticed, to circle them, prioritize them, and then schedule them in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the power of one minute, of two minutes, of five minutes, sometimes I just time myself to see how long it takes uh, to refill the bottle of water when I think I don't have time, right? Or write a, a, a brief thank you note to a colleague when I think I don't have time. And I'm always amazed at what can get done in one minute and two minutes when kind, compassion, focused attention is placed on it, whatever it is. When kind, compassion, fo focused attention is placed on the action item. Does that sound fun? So this is our invitation. Uh, my invitation to you is, you is to revisit this webinar. You can fast forward it, but to, Engage in these steps as many times as you would like. Engage in them as many times as you would like. Been uh, certified in this process for three years now, and every time I engage in it, it feels so fresh uh, because the, the vision has shifted. Um, the action items are different from what they were before. The calendar looks different than what it did before, and people's ideas are different. What's Note it from, from coming from this place of noticing what I'm noticing with compassion um, is, is fresh, always fresh, if that makes sense. Yeah. So pausing now, any questions or comments, ideas, thoughts? Looking at the chat window to see if there's anything that's arising there. Giving you a moment more. And if not, um, this is a quote by Zig Ziglar, who, who was this um, huge motivational speaker. And I, I love this quote, when obstacles arise, you change your direction to reach your goal. You do not change your decision to get there. And unless it's not the right goal for you, yeah. if it doesn't align with your core values, if it doesn't align with who you are and who you wanna become, so Becca, I love doing this to schedule in time for me and to move forward. Yes, thank you. Move forward in the direction of your dream. All right. Thank you, Becca. Any other questions, ideas, thoughts? All right. If not, I invite a gentle attention to the body in the chair, the breath sensation in the body. An offering, just a word, noting a word of gratitude. That'd be this, the gratitude of the relief from scheduling in a plan, an action step. The gratitude for the vision that has been given to you. Gratitude for the opportunity to reflect with mindful compassion practices, supporting that reflection, undergirding that reflection, informing that reflection. All right. And bringing a gentle attention back. Thank you. It is always a uh, intense, <laughs> intense and lovely, like, I don't know how to describe it, but just an honor and a privilege to be, to be with you on this journey. Thank you all so much. See you next week. <laughs>